I was talking to my buddy, uh, I'm a friend of Travis Kern. Oh, you know yeah. Travis? Yeah, great guy. Absolutely. Uh, uh, a class act for sure. He was saying you guys just celebrated your 82nd birthday? Is, was yeah, it, is I, that right? Yeah. How are you feeling overall? Good. You look good. Great. You look no good. No problem at all. Yeah? You yeah. getting around good and everything? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I just, this was a, a, a dream come true for me just to have this moment in time with you, someone I had always looked up to. I've been in racing all my life. My dad, my stepdad, do you remember a driver by the name of Raleigh Beal? Yeah. Well, he drove for my stepfather uh, and was the 1973 USAC National yeah. Sprint Car Champion yeah. in my dad's car, yeah. the Rodeo Bar Special. Um, so, so I've been connected to racing for a long time. And, and so I've been paying attention to the Kinzers for a long time. I just want to thank you for allowing me in, inviting me in today. It's been a real pleasure and a treat to meet you and, and have the opportunity to talk with you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And that's just like when we, like Big Game, that guy, he, I didn't have a Salamito boy from Bloomington, Joe Salamito's son, was about 19. He's run the... Uh, Oh, 75 laps at Lawrenceburg or some, some longer race. Okay, I didn't have power steering in the car then. Of course, power steering had just come out. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're I talking 1970-ish probably in there. In there. Yeah. And I told Dick, I said, well, you know, what do you think about that power steering? He said, oh, I don't need that. He said, in these long races, I said, the hell, I'll wear them all out. Of course, <laughs> he was a big barrel-chested. Right. You know. So we go to Lawrenceburg. Well, Dick's leading the race, and about eight or ten laps left to go. Here comes Tony Salamito and passing. Uh, uh oh, with power steering? Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Dick reared up in the seat and passed him back. Here comes Salamito in about another two or three laps and passed him back again. So then, in, to make a long story short, Dick did win the race barely. Okay. And after the race is over, we're down at the trailer, you know, everybody's bubbles and giggles, you know how that is. <laughs> and Dick says, well, who the hell's that snotty-nosed kid? And I said, well, that's Tony, uh, old man Salamito's son. He said, why, well, he ain't big as a minute. <laughs> and I said, well, he just about got our ass. <laughs> you know, just... Did he know that he had power steering? Uh, well, he probably did. Well, Dick come by that next week and come in and, and like say he drove a truck for uh, uh, one of the companies, think of it a minute, got a reward. And he stopped by in here and he said, uh, you know, you mentioned that power steering thing, you know, and he said, you know, he never said I think I need it, but he said, you know, I think that might help. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So I bought a brand new power steering put in it. But it, I'm telling you, it makes a difference. Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, do they still do this? I, I have a memory of you, and you correct me if I go wrong, if I didn't just dream it, but I think I watched you, and I think Steve was there, a bunch of you guys changing World of Outlaw days, uh, motors in a hotel parking lot. Did oh, yeah. you guys do that? Do they still do that? I mean, or is that a thing of the past? No, they still do that. Okay. Uh, all of the, uh, well, they do it at the racetrack in about just 10 minutes. Yeah. They've got everything bolted on the engine. When you lift the engine out now, the radiator well, it, it, and all comes out. It wasn't out a 10 minute operation, the one I saw. No, I mean, it, no, it was about 30. Yeah, 30 yeah, minutes. okay. And uh, I guess yeah. they still do that then. Talking about drivers uh, messing up, trying to work on a car. We're in uh, racing uh, Anaheim, California. Yeah. <laughs> We're right down the road there about four miles of track and they're going to hot lap at seven. Okay, so we're out in the parking lot and I'm checking the engine, just the valves and all this and all that and retorquing the heads because we'd only run the motor one time and Steve was helping us. So we're all done. He's putting the headers on, a header on the right side and he looks over and he says, uh, you know, he said, I think I dropped that nut and it went down the cylinder. <laughs> and I said, oh, you're kidding me. And he said, well, I can't find it on the ground. 
Well, I said, we can find out easy enough. I said, just put her in gear and we'll kind of ease her up. And if it's in there, it'll stop. Sure enough, it is. Oh, Lord. So here we are. Now what are you going to do? You can't get a magnet down in there and all And you're that. in Anaheim, California. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Ascot. Ascot, yeah, so, yeah. So anyway, I said, well, let's just turn it up on the side. Maybe it'll roll out the same way it went in. We get it up on the side, and I take a piece of wire and play around in the cylinder, and I can't get that thing, can't even find it. I thought, well, ain't no way we can pull the head off and make the race because it's running out of time. So we fool around with it, and I said, well, for one desperate try, just turn her up on a roll cage upside down, me and the crew and Steve, we just turn her upside down. I'm a probing around in that cylinder and still can't get that uh. nut to come fall out or can't even hear it rattle. I said, well, give me a hammer. So here I am beating on the side oh, of this no. motor out <laughs> in California in a pretty good motel area. People coming out looking at us and I thought, man, I bet you think we're in the world is this bunch from. <laughs> Ooh, Lytic, Indiana. <laughs> Where? <laughs> In about five minutes after that, for some reason, that thing just rolled right out on the ground. Oh, Boy, we flipped her over and put the header on her and went to Ascot and got there just in time to qualify the, the last car. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Beverly Jones won the race, and we run second. Uh, well, you know, we, we have, I don't know if it's ever been publicly said, I've never heard it, that, that you're the, you're the, winningest car owner in motorsports history in the world um you could make the case that steve kinzer is the winningest driver in professional motorsports history in the world i, I mean he's he, like to me the iron man of motorsports he, i mean he, how, what, what is he what was he to you well he just astronomically good uh it never well Okay, my best oh, feelings about dirt track racing or whatever is when uh, Jeff Gordon went to NASCAR, okay? Mm -hmm. It was always a NASCAR, always the guys down, well, these mud daubers can't drive pavement. Hmm. Oh, they can't? I thought, well, you ought to come to Salem or somewhere and watch them run, watch Waller. Well, Steve Kinzer run. won with you at Salem, didn't he? Yeah. Anyway, okay, so after that, Jeff just whacks them. Right. Well, Tony Stewart comes along, and he whacks them. And Ryan Newman them. and all the rest. And them guys, I'm telling you, if you can drive a sprint car in these 50-lap all-out race and stand up in a seat, you're physically able to. And NASCAR is a kind of a, uh, would be easy if you had the right car well, owner and had the right setup on your car. Well, that, and the, I mean, compare NASCAR, what, 36 races a year? Back in your day, they were running 100 World of Outlaw races a year. You guys did it for decades. I have no idea how you did that for that long. But just, you know, Steve Kinzer, over 700 victories, the 20 World of Outlaw championships. I know records are made to be broken, broken. but I'll be damned if they're going to get to his. Well... I know, I know, I know, I know you never know, know, but I mean, he was just that, in my mind, that incredible. I it mean, is. It's, it's actually quite unbelievable, really, you know, once you get to think about it. And, it and, is. Uh, you know, we, we talked about Dick Gaines and Steve Kinzer. Your son, Mark, was no slouch in the seat either. You know, a couple of World of All All titles, three times a champion at Knoxville. I mean, uh, Kings Royal. I mean, yeah, he had it going on. So. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. You know, when Mark was in, got out of high school, and uh, he made the statement, said, well, I'd like to see if I could drive a race car. Of course, I thought, oh, my God. Here we go. Tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, in turn, I had... The old, uh, what they call the car, well, it's the car Larry Miller drove with the big block engine in it. Then after Mark got through driving, we sold it to Keith Ford. But anyway, beyond all that, I said, okay, we'll see, talk to my brother Larry that helped 
when we, our, my two brothers helped me with the car, see if he'll go to the races with you and we can it for you. And Bud Barrett, a friend of ours here in town that helped Cecil Beavers when Cecil mm -hmm. was running. So they, oh yeah, yeah. I said, well, you know, we'll pay your way in, your eats and whatever, just kind of have a good time. And I told Mark, I said, well, if you want to try this, I said, I'll tell you what, I said, a lot of wanting to be a race car driver and being one successful to make a living at it is kind of two different things. Of course. So I said, what if you want to try it, Larry and Bud will go with you and they're, you qualify the car, you start on the back of everything, the features, your heat race and all, because as a beginner, I've seen all of them try it. They get up in the pack and they spin out and crash and tear their car up and somebody else's. Yeah. And I said, you run there all year. And then after from the you, back. From the back. And Bud and Larry will be the judge whether you're able to pass somebody without running over him or whatever. And so I said, I'll ask you when the, this season's over, if you, what do you think about your endeavor? <laughs> How'd that go? <laughs> Race is over. Men and men marks down the garage. And I said, well, what do you think? He said, well, I'm, I'm going to be honest. He said, I can tell you it's a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, okay. I figured it would be. But tell me more. <laughs> yeah, tell me a little more. You think you're going to be able to make it? He said, well, tell you the truth, I don't know. <laughs> That's an honest answer. Uh, yeah, and I said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll run one more year, and then you tell me. Okay, he ran one more year, and he got to going fairly decent. He, and after about a month and a half racing, I said, well, now you guys, wherever he qualifies, you start him there. If it's on the front, in the middle. He's got, got the seat time for it now. Yeah, he, he kind of understands this thing can, uh, you know, mash your nose and yeah. beat up your <laughs> kneecaps and <laughs> things like that. Tear you up. So, anyway, they went to start him in, uh, in where he qualified, and he won one race that year. Wow. At uh, Putnamville, I think it was. Got it. And uh, so then the next year, he went out on the World of Outlaw. Of course, he jumps from the local talent into the best in the United States. Okay, so Mark ran probably, I guess, three years in the world of outlaw, kept his nose clean, very seldom turned the car up or getting involved. Finished probably, I think one night a third, and another night a fifth. And he kind of got to where he's running about in the top 10. You know what I mean? And of course, after that, he was kind of making his own way money-wise to pay for a pit crew and all this towing and uh, all that. And uh, then I think he run the World of Outlaws probably five years. Something, I don't know how long it was before he won a race. And he he come up knowing that, you know, if I tear my car up, I'm, I'm out of business. I, you know, you don't get paid that night. Sure. And Maybe that's a better way to learn than running a million dollar car for someone else that if you tear up, they'll just pull another one off the shelf. Yeah. Well, that's the only one he had. Okay. <laughs> then there's that. <laughs> that's that. You go home. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if you don't, if you don't, uh, Turn, turn over enough money, you can spend quite a bit of money out on the road. And, oh, of course. You know, you, uh, of course, me and Steve was running up front quite a bit. And, uh, well, wasn't for that, there's no way I could bring up two drivers. One wasn't winning and the other wasn't winning either. I'd been home in a month. Mm -hmm. You know, you spend, you spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 so you can make your head swim. Sure. And, uh, I got on one season there, I got on this kick of doing the engines and I, they come out with the, uh, the titanium rods, everybody and all them things were great and this and that. I built three motors with that in them, run along there about a month and a half. Wait a minute, motors. did you build your motors too? Yeah. Oh Lord. I mean, I knew you were the top expert chassis man. Uh, 
I guess I, I did not realize you built your engines too. Well, that's anyway, even more remarkable. So to make a long story short, that year, both cars, I made a profit with 850 bucks. I guess that's better than losing. <laughs> 80,000. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but work my royal tail off now. Wow. <laughs> Man. But but Mark was a damn good race car driver. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Once he got polished and got some seat yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he was, uh, I mean, he started out running Steve. You yeah, know. well, we, we got, oh, that last three or four years. Well, and I said, you know, you want to drive? He said, well... Well, I am now. And I said, no, drive the car for me. And I'll be your mechanic and all that. And That's when Steve that. went to NASCAR? Yeah. So, and uh, he said, well, yeah, I guess. And I said, well, you know, if that thing in NASCAR don't pan out, what if Steve comes back? And I said, Mark, I said, I have always, when I hired a driver, that guy was my driver. It didn't matter who, when, where, or what, you'll be the driver. Steve Kenser don't mean nothing. All we gotta do is outrun him, if we can, no matter if he does come back. So anyway, he said, well, you know, I, he kind of, he didn't know if that was a good idea or not. So that winter, I don't know where that's, I don't wanna go over and see. I said, well, now what you gotta do, you gotta get yourself in a little better shape, physical. Oh, you're telling this to your son, yeah. right? Well, so anyway, okay. You can tell when a race car driver is kind of getting tired, or you know, I mean, you're human. You know, and once you get doing that, you slow down. Okay, so there's a helmet around here somewhere that I made a lead, a round lead piece, weighed about. 12, 13 pounds, 14 pounds. You added lead to the helmet? Yeah, and, and made him wear the helmet. Around. Oh my God. And it, you know, working, building up his neck muscles and, and shoulder he, muscles. And he went over here to town, done his deals at the place over at uh, the workout, whatever. He got that summit to next season. He wasn't even the same driver. I mean, it, it made a difference. Oh, made a difference. His gang hold from the word go to the finish. Yeah, yeah, holding the head up. Uh, yeah, that's where you get tired. Right, right, when you're trying to hold yourself up in the seat. Yeah, when yeah. your neck gets tired, and first thing you know it, I mean, it gets hurt, it's damn bad, you can't take Now it. they got the big headrest, they just kind of lean against. Uh -huh. But We all know you are no slouch in a sprint car. You've got well over 150 World of Outlaw wins, um, A main feature events the three Knoxville national titles, a couple of World of Outlaw championships, you won the King's Royal, so I think we can settle in on you were a pretty darn good race driver, but as I look over your father's history, everyone, every from Larry Miller right on up, every driver that ever sat in his cars, either right away or eventually became a winner. How, how much do you attribute your success to your dad? Well, probably close to 90%, you know, his That's cars a lot. were always in the front, and it puts pressure on a driver knowing that when he's in a car that good that he don't perform that that his his job as a race car driver is over yeah well, when you're with carl kinzer yeah. yeah yeah so he had a lot to do with your success a lot to do with that. well 90 percent. Yeah. that's we, and we always had great crews you yeah know, we always of course had great, great crews and uh, uh everybody worked good together and and that's what it takes to uh, put a winning team out there do, do you miss racing at all or are you over it I miss the drop of the green and the adrenaline rush and all that, but you know the traveling and stuff like of that course. just kind of wore me down. And, yeah. and uh, I wasn't getting any younger, and sure, and I was just having trouble keeping up. How how do you fill up your days these days? What? Well, a lot of it's sitting there in the yard. <laughs> uh, Had the tour. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I got a little side gig I do in the summertime, a little land management thing. I mow about 150 acres and take care of the property out there around the lake and stuff. And and the kids keep me busy. Yeah. How many kids do you have? I have two. Two? How old are they? I've got one that's 23 and one that just entered inter college. She's 18. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's the 23-year-old doing? Uh, he's just kind of in between doing things right now. Okay. Me too. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. And your what do, uh, college is your daughter going? Uh, she's to? going to Southern Indiana. Oh, awesome, yep. awesome. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, and meet I you, Don. thank you so much for the invite out. Uh, the conversation with your dad yep. was fascinating. <laughs> I seen when his arms gets going. Oh <laughs> man, he was a waving them too, man. <laughs> Animation plus. <laughs> A wolf whistle? Oh, I never heard of it. <laughs> that is a beauty. I love that. Of course, I love them all. Incredible collection. Here at the home of Carl Kinzer. <laughs>